Dunedin TV presents your local weekly morning show from delightfully different Dunedin. Featuring Justin Cattaccio with Caitlin Hart. Including a musical performance by a local artist and in-depth conversation with people in the know. This is Good Morning Dunedin. This week on Good Morning Dunedin, Bill Rank joins our show in our Art Corner segment, where we're celebrating Dunedin as an art and cultural destination by highlighting local artists and artwork throughout our city. Renee Schlegel joins our show later on to finish out the broadcast with him, his hat, and his guitar. Today is September 11, 2020, and it's been 19 years since that terrible day in New York City. Since then, September 11th is Patriot Day, where we take a moment to remember those who lost their lives that day. Did you know that a piece of the World Trade Center is on display in a memorial at Fire Station 61 on Michigan Boulevard? All of this and more is coming up this morning on Good Morning Dunedin! Good morning Dunedin! Welcome back to your favorite little local morning show. I'm your host, Justin Cattaccio, and I'm here with my lovely co-host, Caitlin Hart. Good morning, Caitlin. Good morning, Justin. We've got a lot to talk about this morning, but first, let's catch up. What have you been up to, Caitlin? Uh, so this weekend, I played some ball and did some well-needed organizing. I had a busy start to Labor Day weekend, working in the booth until noon, but the rest of the day, I took to relax and shop around a little bit. How about you, Justin? How was your Labor Day weekend? Great, thanks, Caitlin. We got a, a new family member this weekend. We got a, a free kitten for my daughter, JC. Uh, it was, our neighbor was giving away free kittens and uh, my daughter's been asking for like a gerbil or a hamster or a guinea pig or something. And personally, I'm a cat person, so we got her a cat. <laughs> Tiggy is a little cutie and my daughter couldn't be happier. Uh, stick around, you just might get to meet Taggy today. Caitlin, what's going on in the Community Corner? Before and after school programs are available through the City's Parks and Recreation Departments. For more information, go to DunedinGov.com and click on Parks and Recreation under City Departments. It's important to keep our kids safe as well as each other. Katie Ducharme has a message on wearing masks. Hi everyone, Katie Ducharme here, real estate agent with Coastal Properties and your Toronto Blue Jays anthem singer for spring training here in beautiful Dunedin, Florida. I'm here to tell you today what myself and my team have been doing during these hard times um, to keep our community safe. We've been wearing our masks, we've been social distancing, and we've been washing our hands frequently. I hope you're all doing the same and be smart, Florida. Thanks, Katie. Did you know Fire Station 61 has a 9-11 memorial that includes a piece of an I-beam from the Twin Towers? Good morning, Dunedin. My name is Martin Villamick and I'm the Logistics Chief of the Dunedin Fire Department. So today we wanted to talk a little bit about 9-11. Uh, as many of you know, September uh, 11th, 2001 was a terrible day in the United States. Uh, terrorist attacks on the Twin Towers and the Pentagon in New York City. and uh, many people lost their lives, almost 3,000 people lost their lives in that one single event. 343 of them were firefighters. So on 9-11, which is also known as National Patriots Day, uh, all fire departments across the country do a moment of silence around 9 a.m. So today at 9 a.m. our fire department took place in a moment of silence um, to show respect and to remember all of those that had died on 9-11. Uh, the fire department is a tight-knit group of people. Um, it's referred to as a brotherhood. So whenever we lose a firefighter, brother or sister, uh, it's felt across the nation for all of our firefighters, pretty much across the world. So when we lost 343 firefighters on 9-11, it was you know, very uh, sickening to hear, very, you know, it hit our hearts uh, quite a bit. So uh, it's good to see that on 9-11, we recognize and we remember those who lost their lives. And uh, we always you know, talk about it amongst the guys, you know, to, to just kind of remember and never forget those who gave that ultimate sacrifice. Um, when the towers were burning, a lot of people have seen the videos that uh, firefighters were running up the towers while people were coming out. So there's no doubt that those firefighters that went into that building realized that they may not return. And that, you know, unfortunately is part of our job. It's an inherent risk. So we just, uh, like I said, we want to remember them and dedicate 9-11 to them so that we'll never forget them and their families and the sacrifice that they gave. Thank you. 
Firehouse Subs is donating money to the Dunedin Fire Department to get thermal imaging cameras. Today we're here with Firehouse Subs. A few months ago, we applied for a public safety grant through the Firehouse Public Safety Foundation, and the city of Dunedin was luckily awarded $36,700 to purchase new thermal imagers. So today we have the local store owner out here with some of his crew, and we just wanted to bring them out, show them what we purchased, kind of explain uh, you know, what the thermal imagers do. Like I said, we wanted to bring them out here with his crew to thank them you know, personally for uh, the award that we received from the foundation, and as I said, explain some of the, uh, the aspects of the thermal imagers. Uh, we wanted to thank you first of all, Colin. Thank you very much. Absolutely, yeah. And if you could pass pleasure. it on to all yeah. your crew members and to the foundation and stuff. Um, like I said, we compete against other departments for these funds. The Public Safety Foundation is great because they provide uh, extra funding for public safety entities that can't normally afford some of the equipment that they really, really require. So we were fortunate enough to get four Bullard thermal imagers. And what a thermal imager is, is uh, similar to what you see in the police helicopters, what they call FLIR, where it produces a heat signature. So when our firefighters go into a structure, uh, it's filled with smoke, they can't see the floor to ceiling. The thermal imager helps them locate the seat of the fire, it helps them locate victims more quickly so that they can bring them out and hopefully give them a better chance of survival. The reason we did this is some of our thermal imagers are, are a little over 15 years old and the technology in them has advanced uh, greatly. As I showed the store crew here, uh, when you look at the images in the older ones, it's very hard to tell uh, other than some minor heat signatures. With the new ones that we received, the technology and the advance rate is so quick that uh, it makes it a lot easier for our firefighters to locate victims. And you can kind of see, it's like looking at a TV screen now, the way that the technology has advanced. So this allows our firefighters to check the temperature inside the buildings. It also helps them locate victims, like I said, a lot quicker. Uh, they're really nice and lightweight. They have a long battery life on them, which is great with the new thermal imagers compared to our older ones, which were wearing out on us. And again, we just really appreciate to have these tools in our hands. And the firefighters standing back here will definitely thank everyone for, you know, to have these with them when they go inside a fire. Makes their job a lot easier um, and a lot safer for them. Thanks, Marty. And thank you all for being our hometown heroes. We would like to take a moment of silence for those who didn't make it on 9-11. On a lighter note, let's head over to the Painted Fish Galleries with Bill Rank in today's Art Corner. Good morning, Dunedin. I'm Bill Rank. My wife Linda and I own the Painted Fish Gallery on Main Street in Dunedin, and we've been here 27 years. Uh, I do oil paintings, my wife Linda does calligraphy, and my daughter does mixed media work. Uh, I have done a variety of subjects, but the favorite ones are some of the marine species of fish that are in our area, a lot of the bird life, and the coastal landscapes. That's a lot of the work that I like to do. I was born in Chicago, and when I was five years old, uh, that was at the height of the polio epidemic. And um, I got polio, and the initial bout of it um, I did there, and uh, uh, the doctors uh, recommended that I would do much better uh, recovering if I was not in that cold northern climate. Pretty much of a struggle, but the family got me down to Florida and I started to improve. Um, the polio is, is something that has a residual effect for me. Um, my uh, legs are paralyzed and uh, I walk with leg braces and crutches. Uh, and so that's a lifelong experience for me. As I got a little bit older, I discovered getting out and uh, catching a fish was just the greatest thing. And I loved the landscape, the birds, everything about it. I, I grew up in Pompano Beach. The subjects are things that um, I associated with as I was growing up all, all the way till right now. And I'm 71, so it's been a lot of years. Um, I grew up loving to fish. I don't ever get to go fishing anymore, but I love to fish. The, the um, species of fish that are along the shore here, you don't have to go way out in the Gulf. They're, they're in close, snook and tarpon. Uh, and the bird life is everywhere. Um, there's egrets, blue herons, osprey, eagles. 
Um, and those, those are all great subjects to do. I've put a grouper, usually a grouper, into a scenario where a grouper shouldn't be. I had this one-time inspired idea that I would put the grouper in a doorway of a house or uh, under a stilt house or behind a palm tree or something like that that kind of gave the impression of that was a place that they would normally hide if they were not in the water and swimming around in the air. So um, yeah, I, I, I did some artwork with that idea and uh, it was it got well received. It even got picked up by a couple of museums, which was very flattering. And one of the early ones that I did was for the Dunedin Art Harvest. Um, I think that was 1991. I used a uh, historic house on Victoria Drive to have the grouper coming out of the doorway. Um, and uh, as a poster for the event, you know, it was on t-shirts and posters and other promotional materials. And I, boy, I was king that year at Art Harvest. I, I, was, I was the big guy. I was signing posters and signing t-shirts for customers and uh, great event. You're not going to find too many people that uh, as artists that will stick their neck out and lease a storefront in the high rent district. Uh, but that's, that's what's necessary to make the connection with customers. Uh, their customers are not going to find me if I sit in my bedroom and paint. Um, so I, I paint uh, right here. Um, the painting behind me is what I'm working on right now. It's getting close to being done. Um, and uh, I'm not on display for people to watch me paint, but they walk by the windows and they can see me in here doing something. I don't know, he's doing something in there. <laughs> and, uh, but it, it's, it's, uh, it gives me a connection with people. When, when, I, when they come in, I don't have to be a salesman. Um, to, it leads to, um, oh, you, have you been doing this long? And um, I'll tell them, yeah, oh yeah, since 1970, doing it for a living. Um, and I plan to do it for a few more years, see what I can get away with. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. It's always fun checking out your new artwork over there at uh, Painted Fish Galleries in uh, Victoria Place. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we're going to head over to Caitlin's Crafty Corner. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Good Morning Dunedin. Today in Caitlin's Crafty Corner, we have a special guest joining us. Justin, would you like to do the honors? Sure. This is Tyke. <laughs> He's, oh. This is Tyke. He's so tiny. He, uh, we just got him for uh, my daughter's birthday, which is coming up. She really wanted a, uh, a gerbil or a hamster or something, but I wanted a kitten, so we got a kitten. He's that right. So cute. He's that right, Tiggy. Uh, anyway, so today, uh, Caitlin's Crafty Corner. Yeah, since Justin got a new kit in this past weekend, we are going to be making a homemade cat toy. This is an example of what it's going to look like when we finish. So, I think Tiggy's a little mesmerized by the set yeah. and the lights and stuff because he usually likes his toy. It's not getting too slow. Oh, there we go. Oh. All right, so show us a little about what we got going on. Okay, so we're gonna start with these two sticks. And Justin. Tag, you go back in your little house. I don't know if you wanted to second. show this part. So we had put a little. No mewing. Screw, if you can okay. see that. Yeah, 
Here's a uh, Seth, go to this camera. So this is an eye hook for a picture. This is like what you hang the picture wire from. And uh, I know they're kind of hard to come by sometimes, but if, uh, so you just take the, the, the eye hook and just kind of screw it right in the top. And, and you know. And that's gonna be how we're gonna hook up our ribbon. All right. So we have all this ribbon over here. We have tons of colors. And we also have Some, a uh, box of tapes. Wazi tape, I guess what it's called. <laughs> and, We're going to uh, use the tape here the tape to along. decorate the sticks. And then we're going to tie some ribbon to the end. So we're going to start by started. decorating. What color did you choose? I got uh, rainbows and birds. Oh, perfect. Cats love birds. You like that type? I chose this pink like sparkly because I love sparkles and I have a girl cat at home. Okay. So just kind of just start at the end here. I'm going to do a uh, double orange here. Snip off some ribbon. And I'm going to use pink with polka dots. Okay. I am using pink polka dots for mine mm. and a thin white to mix it up. Here's some birds, Justin. That would oh, match okay. your bird right. tape. All kinds of ribbons here. Yes, I love it. All the different colors. My wife's nice little creation here with the get it other oh, tape i see yes she's so crafty i'm gonna have to have her start doing this crafty cr corner oh that's not i'll just use this one here have, to have her as a guest host one of these days <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm sure she has tons of crafts she can show us yeah she used to be a, like a little art teacher like, have the kids jc's friends came over oh that sounds fun art. so our house is full of art supplies and fun stuff like that so there you go yeah, yeah. So thanks again to my lovely wife, Dawn. All right, let's try them out. Yes. Let's get the, let's get the judge. See who's he's. See who he likes better. <laughs> Not that it's a competition or anything. All right, Taggy. Let's see which one you like. Oh, I think he likes yours. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Aww. I'll pick him up and we can finish our segment here. So was that it for Caitlin's Crafty Corner? Yeah, that's it. So there's so many different ways and colors and things to use for these and pretty cool. Obviously you see here that the cat really loves them. So it is a fun little craft to do at home. Uh oh, uh oh. So, oh. <laughs> so I would <laughs> like to thank Justin and Taigi for joining me today in my crafty corner. And uh, okay. that's all. All right. Almost time for birthdays. Birthday shout Yes. Outs? All right. I'm going to. It's that time again. I'm going to go bring uh, Taigi home to, to Mama. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. It's that time again for this week's birthday shout out. Happy birthday to Brianna. Brianna just turned 21 on Wednesday. She works at the library and loves dogs. Cheers to 21 years. Happy birthday to my cousin Lila. Lila turned seven today. She loves LOL dolls and pretty much taught herself to swim at six years old. Happy birthday. Also, happy birthday to my uncle Ray. He and Lila share the same birthday. And happy birthday to Heather. Her birthday is Monday and she is the best sister ever. Again, happy birthday to everyone. Continue to sit in those birthdays. Great show, everyone. Thank you for watching. Our musical guest this week is Renee Schlegel. I'd also like to thank our guest, Katie Descharm, Bill Rank in our Art Corner segment, and Renee for playing us out. And of course, you, wherever you are, for joining us. You can reach out to us on social media to share your story and your birthdays. Please remember to be kind to one another and stay safe out there. Caitlin. Good, Good morning, morning Dunedin. Dunedin.
Change is coming, change is in the air. I can't ignore the signs, it's written everywhere. Nothing stays the same, that's just the way it is. We keep on moving through space and time. It's space, space and time. Change it, oh, oh, change it. People come and go, places you call home. Change it, oh, oh, change it. Leave your past at the door. Now it's here to explore. Say, change it. All these changes When your world falls apart You gotta start from the start With one door closes Another opens up Don't be afraid Walk right in Don't hesitate You know that wheel It keeps on spinning Every end's a new beginning Destiny's a guide Let's enjoy the ride Said let Enjoy that ride Change it, oh, oh, change it. People come and go, places you call home. Change it, oh, oh, change it. Leave your past at the door, now it's used to explore. The changes, all these changes. When your world falls apart, you gotta start from the start. It's okay, it's okay, it's all right. Everything will be just fine. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Everything will be just.